Are you ready to take your business to the next level and make the money you want so that you can create the impact you desire? Then you're in the right place. It's possible to run a successful business built around your life. Get ready for a little bit of tough love and a whole lot of strategy to grow your business without sacrificing your sanity. If you're ready to get out of your own way and step into the role of CEO, then let's go. I'm Amy Tra, and this is the Motivated CEO Podcast. Did you know that there is a right way and a wrong way to leverage the power of relationships to grow your business? In today's episode, I have the coolest guest on, Bailey Hancock, and we are talking all things strategically building relationships going about it in a way that feels good, a way that's mutually beneficial, not the icky, slimy, sleazy DMs that we've all gotten, because let's be honest, those are just so cringeworthy and there's a better way. So buckle up because this is going to be an incredible episode. But before we dive in, Bailey, I'm so excited that you're here with me today. Thank you so much for having me, Amy. I cannot wait to talk to your people about my favorite subject. Oh my gosh, this is going to be such a good conversation. But first, share with us a little bit more about yourself, who you are, what you do, and who you serve. I am Bailey Hancock. I am Archie and Penny's mom. They are preschoolers. I'm also a connection facilitator and strategist who teaches primarily female entrepreneurs how to build, nurture, and leverage relationships to achieve their goals and succeed together. And that can usually take the form of harnessing the power of community, connection, and collaboration to increase impact, increase visibility, and increase credibility. Mm, Yes, yes, yes to all of that. I want to know, what is your opinion? Where in the world do we forget about the power of relationships? Because it's something that's so foundational, yet so often overlooked when entrepreneurs are trying to grow their businesses. So where did we lose sight of this? I think with the rise of kind of individualism in this country, especially, and the rise of this idea of, you know, there could be only one, or if you don't do it alone, then it doesn't count somehow as your own success. But there has been no point in history and no successful person to ever have lived that did so in a vacuum, right? Like we survived in tribes. Um, Then long, long after that, like even the top athletes in the world, you know, LeBron pays millions for his support team and his coaches and his trainers and his physical therapists and all of that. We, every successful person, you know, Oprah's not out there doing Oprah's thing by herself. She has a huge team of people, the best in the world that are supporting her so that she can be great at what she does. And this is what entrepreneurs often get wrong, myself and most of my friends included. If you're a solopreneur, which even that term is almost setting us up for failure, because again, you're not a solopreneur. You are an entrepreneur. You have an idea, but in order to do most of anything, you do have to bring in support. And even if that support is just a strong group of fellow entrepreneur friends that you can commiserate with and complain to when things are hard or celebrate when something great happens that maybe your partner or your family or your friends who are not entrepreneurs might just not get. And so even just having that moral support with your connections is huge. Even if you're doing the work alone, technically, you will get so much farther if you do it with other people. Such a great point. You will. You will get so much farther if you link arms with others, if you're willing to ask for and accept help. Because you're absolutely right. When you look at these public figures that we consider wildly successful, they're not doing it alone. They've never done it alone. They're willing to receive help. They've That's learned. It is a hard one to do because it's it's hard for us to admit it. I think it's almost our ego a little bit. It's 100% in the way. our ego. Yeah. It's 100% our ego and it's society's expectations. And I think especially, you know, the millennial generation and beyond, you know, we were raised to do all the things, speak multiple languages, be part of a million clubs, like 
do so much, excel in school, work really hard. And I know for me growing up, I felt like, okay, well, I have to be the best. I have to be top in the class. I have to succeed. There can be only one class president. There can be only one lacrosse team captain, right? And so I think all of those things made it seem like that was normal. And then as I've gotten older and as I've come in and out of entrepreneurship over the last decade plus, I realized that in the moments where I'm really excelling, whether it's as an employee or an entrepreneur, it's when I have a team of people, be it even just moral support or otherwise supporting me and they're alongside me. And it feels so much less sad and lonely and stressful yeah. when you have people supporting you. But that part about accepting help is critical. And that's a two-part piece. Asking for help feels uncomfortable and accepting help feels uncomfortable. So if you're in that camp and you're like, yeah, I don't even know how to go about beginning to do that, you are so not alone. You are part of the majority, but I promise you there is so much of a better way. Gosh, you are speaking to my soul because yeah, I was of that same generation and it was all based off of external validation and checking off somebody else's check boxes. You know, like you said, there's always like this competition mindset that yeah. we were brought up with because you're right. There was only one class president. There was only one valedictorian. There was only, you know, there was always this like subconscious striving for more. And unless yeah. you achieve that one thing, like you weren't going to be enough. So it really comes back to having the self-awareness, doing the inner work and realizing, you know what? The only validation I need is my own. And I, I spent mean, years and I'm still working on it, unlearning same. those patterns that have been ingrained in us. But what you have taught us just now, like, is so powerful. The power of being open to receiving when you realize that there is no competition out there, that there are people there ready and willing to help you and to support you in different capacities. And that's going to look different for everyone. Right. And I think that's just so important to be open to receiving. And in order to build this, we really need to lean into the power of relationships. Yes. So where do we even start? Because there's a really <laughs> good way to do it. And there's a really cringy way to intentionally build these relationships. Could you speak upon yeah. that a little bit? 100%. Usually the way people go about it incorrectly is starting with asking. So starting to leverage the relationships versus building and nurturing first, it's a cyclical thing. I always think of a garden when it comes to my network because it's it's so relevant, right? Like you don't just one day go, oh, I'm hungry. I'm going to go out to my garden and pick some vegetables. If you've planted no seeds and you've not watered those seeds, there will be no vegetables to pick. And if there are, it's like, what kind of nutrients are going to be in them if they're just randomly out there, right? You haven't paid any, them any attention until you were hungry. So the time to start building and nurturing a network and relationships is long before you need to leverage them, right? And so as an entrepreneur, this can look like joining communities of other entrepreneurs. It can look like building your online community, whether that's on LinkedIn or a number of virtual communities that are out there. There's so many ways that you can do this. And it really comes down to identifying what's your goal? Are you trying to make new friends? Are you trying to find people that have a similar phase of life or that they're in a similar phase of life to you or that they have a kind of understanding of the sort of business or work that you do? Having the idea of what it is that you're hoping to gain from it from the beginning is super crucial. And then going to where those people are. And there's so many places to find them. It's just a matter of taking your time and really being intentional about where you're positioning yourself out in the world to be discoverable by other people and to find like-minded souls that you're looking for. Yes. They're out there. They are 100% out there. It's a matter. And they're looking for you. Yes. Yes. And when you're intentional about it, when you're strategic about it, that's when you start to see all of the amazing opportunities out there. So often yes. we're focused on ourselves. Like you said, we're focused on, oh gosh, I need this. I need that. That we're, we're closing ourselves off. But when we realize, okay, there are opportunities, where can I find these? Where are my people at? And what is the goal? That right there is a game changer because now we can approach it strategically and with intent. 
And something else you said, I love your garden analogy that, you know, we, we have to build and nurture. We don't just go out there when we're hungry, really being crystal clear on that goal and seeking to serve something that's mm-hmm. really helped me is just being human, seeking to serve <laughs> yes. others. Like, Seems okay, simple, right. very difficult. <laughs> or it, it sure is, right? I mean, I've been on networking calls where immediately the person slides into my DMs and they're like, hey, buy my thing. Okay, that's very cringy. Yeah. But hey, let's just get to know each other first on a human level. You know, yeah. let's talk about these things, these commonalities that we might yes. share versus buy my thing right off the bat. Cause that just comes across desperate. I it's think it's disingenuous just a, yes, too. Right. Like, and can we, you imagine going for coffee with that person one right. day? Never. The relationship right. is over before it began because they came in way too hot. Right. Exactly. Which kind of leads us into something else I wanted to talk about was when we do get those weird DMs saying, okay, we just connected. Let's hop on a coffee chat. Like we, what, what just happened? Please don't do that. Tell me your take on this. Please don't do that. And you know, and this is the thing, like there can be quick relationships in DMs. And this year alone, I've had over 150 conversations with people since the end of last year. And the bulk of those are with new people to my network and I'm finding them through connections with other people. So a lot of warm introductions right now are happening in my world. And it will look like a friend who I've connected with or who's known me for a while, connect to me in LinkedIn's DM saying, Hey, you should totally know this person. Here's why I say hello. And I will usually say like, Oh my gosh, I read your bio. I totally resonate with this part or, oh my gosh, I went to school there or, oh, my husband went to school. You find a connection point. And I talk about connection points a ton. And effectively, it's the place where on your Venn diagram between you and the other person, your circles overlap. So my company is called Overlap Collective. My podcast in the works and my soon to be book are called Seeking the Overlap. And it's the crux of everything I do. It's like, what are the connection points between you and the people around you? Because that's where your humanity lives. That's where all of your commonalities live. That's where you can see each other as equals and as a fellow human being having a human experience on this earth, which is where everything begins from. If you start close in at that overlap and then expand out, things are so much different than if you start in the outside and you're like, you need this thing. I checked out your website and it's terrible. You need my, like that one always blows me away. Yes, I get that all the time. Like, wow, wow, thanks. So right. (laughs) Now I feel really sad about myself. Yeah, exactly. It's like, this is a weird vibe you're coming in with. But if somebody comes in very genuine, like, hey, this is how I approach it. If I get a warm introduction from somebody via email or LinkedIn DM, I will say, you know, any friend of Amy's as a friend of mine, I love what you said about this. Your work and my work seem to overlap here. If you're ever interested in taking this conversation to a Zoom, you know, virtual coffee chat, here's my link. And there's never any pressure. There's never a, let's find time in the next week to chat. It's like, here it is. I'm available if you're available. And I fully recognize that not everybody is in a headspace of connection at every point in time. I'm not even, and I'm a connection facilitator and strategist, but there are times in my life and quarter two for me is sort of one of those where I'm pulling back a bit on the amount of connection, new connections, especially that I'm doing because I need to integrate what I've learned in the last quarter or two, I need to actually do some work and there are seasons for all of this. So I go into every new relationship, understanding that they may be in a totally different headspace than I'm in. I'm going to slide my business card effectively across the table and say, whenever you're ready, I'm available and I'm very interested. And then it happens when it happens. I believe in timing fully. And I'm telling you, there have been times where somebody's booked a call right away and it's been rescheduled like three times. And by the time we talk, it's like perfect timing for whatever reason. So I'm not offended if somebody's like, I like this, but not anytime soon, no problem. And if they take me up on it right away and book a call for the next day, cool, I'm into that too. But just coming in, sort of understanding, you don't know where everybody's headspace is, be available. And I like what you said before, like you have to sort of lead with value too. Yeah, oh, so many good points you just made there. And that's what builds those deeper relationships. When you're finding the commonalities, when you're finding that overlap, that's what it's about. It's about connecting because we all at the end of the day want to feel heard. We want to feel valued. We want to feel loved and accepted. 
like you said at the very beginning, you know, we used to run in tribes. Well, now we're still, we want that. We want to be accepted by the tribe. We want that deep connection to others. But to your point you just made, you don't know what else is going on. Yeah. And I think a lot of times we're afraid to ask because we're afraid of being rejected. Because oh, rejection is at the core of all of it. Right, right, Fear of rejection. exactly. But when you realize it's nothing personal, you only know this little sliver of their life that you see on a post on social media. You don't know all of the things on the back end that are going on in their life. That just because you hear a no, it just might be not be the right time right now. And exactly. exactly as you said, it's so crazy how the world works, how timing always works out. The stars align just as they're supposed yeah. to. And it's so cool when we can really lean into that and be like, okay, you know what? This is, this is all happening at the perfect pace for me because exactly. let's face it, you know, online, it's easy to get wrapped up into the, the on-demand culture that like, okay, I said, I wanted to start a business. I should have a 50 K a month business right now. Oh my gosh, get out works. of my head. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's not how it it's works. It's unfortunately not how it works with anything, right? Like right. sustainably, intentionally building, nurturing, and leveraging relationships. It's not the smash and grab like, oh, I need this. I need a new job right now, or I need clients. Let me go quickly, like meet some people that can open doors for me. That does not work in the long run. It might work randomly every now and then, but that's that's kind of out of your control. But if you can be thoughtful about consistently adding new people, I call it curating your community instead of just like growing your network because growing your network implies just like a spray and pray methodology, right? Where it's like, I'll take anybody to my network and I won't. I actively prune to go back to the garden analogy. I prune my network all the time. And that looks like unfollowing certain people from like my LinkedIn feed because it's not even anything against them. It's just not resonating with me. It's not the kind of content I want to surround myself with. I'm always thinking about, okay, if I'm in a season of wanting more, let's just say podcast guest opportunities, which was one of my goals this year is to be on more podcasts so I can reach more people and, and meet more people that way. I'm going to put myself in places where I can find more of those opportunities, right? I'm going to be meeting people who host their own podcasts. I'm going to be meeting people who also leverage that as a strategy to increase their visibility. I'm going to put myself in places where that it, that goal is supported. I'm not going to be putting myself in places where I know that I'm going to be seeing a ton of sales content for SEO optimization because that's just not a priority for me. And there's too much information on the internet to not be intentional about what you are seeing every day because you'll be inundated and overwhelmed all the time if you don't. Yeah, 100%. It's all about being intentional. It's all about having that clarity. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Yes. When you make that shift, that's when growing a business becomes sustainable because now you know why. And you can say yes to those opportunities that are going to get you closer to that goal that you're working towards. And you can say no to the rest. That really helps you maintain those boundaries and makes business easier. It makes it feel good. But I, I just love everything you're saying. And I wanna know one more thing from you. So we're building all of these connections. We're growing our network. You said, you know, you take the time to intentionally prune your network. What are you doing to nurture your network? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times people hop on a coffee chat and they're like, oh, you are great. But then you never hear from them again. It's like, yeah. okay, well, maybe this person follows me maybe every once in a blue moon. But what are you into? What are you doing to strategically nurture and fertilize? It's my favorite part. <laughs> it's my favorite part of the process. Yeah, yeah that nurture piece it's the part I feel most comfortable in because if we think about what's actually happening in the build, nurture, leverage formula, build is an active pursuit. That's where I'm actively meeting new people, whether it's at a co-working space I just joined or it's virtual coffee dates or it's in people's DMs, whatever. That is a lot of effort, right? To go out and meet new people, you sort of have to gear up to do that. Got to yep. have the energy. You have to have the desire. You have to have like the extroversion capacity. 
And even ex an extrovert like myself, I'm not always in that headspace, right? I have two kids. Like I mentioned, I was awake for three hours in the middle of the night last night. On a day like today, I'm likely not going to be in the mood to go out and meet new people, right? It's, and they're not going to get my best. So the building piece takes a lot of effort and intentionality. The leveraging piece on the end, that's the asking for help. Okay. And even those of us that preach this have a hard time with asking for help. So that part can feel a little intimidating too. The nurture part though, that's the fun part for me because I can just give and I can amplify other people's messages and their needs. One of my favorite things that I started doing at the beginning of 2024 was doing weekly connection roundup posts on LinkedIn. And because I meet with a lot of people every week, I realized early on, so I was laid off from my day job in November of 2023, which is what got me to come back to entrepreneurship. Very very happily so. But I was a bit out of water. I was like, okay, what direction do I go in first? So what I did was what I do, which is start connecting with people, reaching back out to people I haven't talked to in a while, making new friends. So as I was going through the first months of 2024, where I was connecting with anywhere from five to 10 people a week, I decided, well, you know what, maybe I'll show my work. I'll show my work on all this connection that I'm doing and make sure that it's not just happening and then disappearing to your point, right? You could have a great conversation and then never hear, hear from somebody again because you didn't have a reason to. So my weekly connection roundup post, I list every person that I chatted with that week. I'll usually say, oh, I know this person from back in this job, or I was introduced to this person by this person who I know through this person. So I'm like showing the work in a way, like when you had to do math problems growing up, I'm showing the work, I'm showing how, to, how I came to this number. And so I post once a week, my connections from the week prior. And I also include a little blurb. Everybody knows now when I have a conversation with them, I'll say, what do you want included in the roundup post? People are like, am I going to be in the connection roundup post this week? So they get excited because they know it's going to be great visibility to my network for them. So I will link to a program they're launching. I'll link to a podcast episode they were on. I will link to something. And I always include a note at the end. If there's anybody you're interested in connecting with deeper, either send me a DM or say hello in the comments. I will make that warm introduction. So it's me practicing what I preach, showing my work, and also helping to amplify everybody in my network's voices, which is to your point, people want to be seen. They want to be received. They want to feel like anybody cares about what they're doing or paying attention. And so that's my favorite way to do that is hand a microphone to my community, to all of these people. Yeah. And that's something I love doing as well. It's just amplifying others. Like, doesn't it feel good? Like, I don't care about like the spotlight being on me. I'm like, let's put it on everyone else because I'm just one person. But if I can help amplify you, it's that law of reciprocity that 100%. when I have an ask, because I've come to them without any like you know, hey, I would love to share this out. Like I just shared out five people to my email list today. They're hosting like free webinars, doing all these cool things. And I'm like, my network needs to know about these things. Yes, that these it's awesome the kind thing people. to do. Right, exactly. And even some of them are very similar niche wise, but it's like, okay, I, there's plenty for all of us. And plenty. I don't have the capacity to serve everyone every time. So, hey, maybe that person's a better fit. That's amazing. Let's amplify her. But by doing that, like it really does create such that deep connection and they just feel such gratitude. I feel good. They feel good that, you know, I really think that this was part of the reason I had such a successful launch back in March when I first released my book. I had a huge launch team because I knew in order to make this a success, I need my voice amplified. So all of these people that I've connected with showed up for me. And it was just so cool seeing that mm. reciprocity and like, hey, no, you support me all the time. Like, what do you need? I'll do whatever for you. Yes. And, you know, just that the power of, again, relationships, the power of being a human and just connecting and being willing to ask for and receive help. Bailey, you have shared so many mic drop moments, so much value. I love talking to you. I could talk to you all day, but in the, the interest of time, tell listeners where we can learn more about you and the amazing things that you're doing. 
you can go to overlapcollective.com. That has all of my things on there. And please connect with me on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is where I'm spending the bulk of my time these days, which just makes sense. And I think it's one of the platforms, it's maybe the only platform out there right now that feels like there's the most opportunity for connection with other people, which seems odd. I've been on LinkedIn for 17 years since it came out, and I feel differently about it today than I ever have before. It feels very optimistic and very hopeful and a, just a genuine place to connect with other people. So please find me on LinkedIn. You can get to that through overlapcollective.com as well. And just send me a DM and say, hey, I heard you on Amy's podcast. I'd love to connect. That's my favorite thing to do. So please come say hi. And Amy, thank you so much for letting me have this conversation with you because I think it's one that can really help people in every facet of their lives, business, personal, everything in between. It, it truly is. It truly is. Thank you. I appreciate you. My pleasure. And until next time, cheers to making the money you want so you can create the impact you desire. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode.